a subsite is just one more way of taking all that you have to offer and partitioning it or just creating a, another area for it. It's not so much like you're adding something new as you're taking something you have and then finding a way to subdivide it. Very often, subsites are used to create a separate security context for managing certain types of content. And so you don't want to think of a subsite the way you would creating another library, for example. I mean, you, you could, but that's really not their purpose. So first, if you're looking at my screen, here's my team alpha. I've done nothing with this yet. Under new, when I start up here, we don't see much of anything. We see all the usual stuff, but no ability to create a subsite. What we have to do is go to our settings and we have to look at our site contents. Now remember what site contents is about. Site contents is here to show us everything that should be contained within a site, whether we see it within the navigation or not. This is how we get to all of it. Let's look at my subsites and we'll discover, well, of course, we didn't expect to see anything. We just got started. Here's new. And there is subsite, right? That's how we begin to build our way downstream if this is the sort of thing that we need to do. And we can click on this and we can work our way through the process. For those of you who like the visual comparison, I'm going to go back to home. It's kind of how this is where really everything lives. I'll go to the uh, main site here. Now you can tell by looking at the layout of the screen, I've stepped outside of that Office 365 Teams area and I've got a regular site, I'm, I'm back into a site collection, a traditional site collection. How do I know? Well, I can tell by the options I have across the top and I can see some you know, navigation across the top as well on, you know, on top links and so on. So I can see all this extra, these extra pieces and that's one of the ways I know where I am. Well, I'm gonna click up here. There's site content. Now here I will have subsites, lots of subsites. Let's create one. We're doing this kind of down the more traditional path. Here we are. This is what many people expect to see. This has got a few extra steps. So why is your instructor doing this? Because your instructor wants you to know what's accessible to you when you build. If you do it through the more modern approach, which is what we did there previously, you don't see all of these options. Right? But if you do the more classical approach, you do. And so people say, all right, so what's the difference? Why are we doing this? Well, lots of these templates have a lot of utility, but they may not look all that spectacular on mobile devices, among other issues. So if that's not a concern, you want to look at these. Let's just decide to call this Team Beta. Here we are. All right, notice here we, we define the URL ourselves. So now it's my job, take those spaces out. I don't care that the spell checker doesn't get it. The spell checker never will over here. We'll keep the language set to English and look at all of this. What are all these? You might actually see more of these within your organization. It will depend upon how many templates your IT staff has pre-installed. The community site, it, this basically means um, social media. This is where people can rank things on a scale of one to five, they can post comments. Whatever that sort of interactive feel is you get with social media, that's what a community site is. Project sites have been decked out really to use just the features and functionality that project managers or team members would want to use when working on a project. Enterprise, what's out here? Let's take a look. Most people would say, stay away from these. I'm, I'm the sort of person who kind of jumps in with both feet, so I would not say that. Certainly early on um, in my years with SharePoint, I did a lot with um, the Business Intelligence Center. You're building out the earlier forms of BI dashboards and so forth. That's not really the way we do it now. We use Microsoft's Power Platform to do that. But uh, certainly there's a lot of utility out here. And uh, I would be experimenting with these if I thought uh, after having read a description, that I would really want some of this functionality. Now for the moment, let's not worry too much about Duet Enterprise. You know, this is for dual purpose sorts of things and we're not really gonna focus there. I'm gonna to switch to collaboration 
And um, this time around, I'll take the classic experience. All right, just so it'll go back to what we're, we're accustomed to seeing. Notice that down below, with respect to permissions, I'm going to leave it, use the same permissions as the parent site. And this way, while I'm building, I don't have to get tripped up with permissions issues. If I decide later to clip those permissions and set it up the way I want, I'll do that. We're going to do that in this course in a later chapter. Down below, I have a few more questions here. Does the site on the quick launch, do I want this on the parent site? I'll say no, let's leave it off the parent site. Would I like this on the top link bar of the parent site? Sure, why not? Piece up above. And do I want to use the entire top link bar from the parent site? I'll leave that to no because I'm going to want to build out my own. But if I, slip, if I flip all of these to no, think about what that means. The only way anybody will find this site is if they know what address to type on the address bar because I will have removed it from visual navigation. So I don't mind taking it off of Quick Launch. I don't feel that stuff ever belongs on Quick Launch anyway. Display this on the top link site of the parent site. Well, if I don't do that, I better remember what that address was I typed in up here <laughs> because this is going to be the only way to get back to it. So let's click Create. And let's give that a few moments. Now here, it will take us right into the site after it's finished doing its work. We'll see a more traditional screen layout and we can begin to add whatever functionality we'd like from there. Yeah, here we are. So some of you might be looking at this screen thinking, yeah, I have seen stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, SharePoint 2013. They just changed some of the colors and moved a few small things. But yeah, that's it. This is the more familiar sort of experience. And now we go in here and we take off what we don't want and we add in the functionality we do. We hope this video helped. Make sure to click the thumbs up and click the subscribe button right here and click the link above to check out our Limelight classes, a free virtual live training. See you in the next video.